Hey everyone, I am Ashi Vishwas and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will learn the basic HTML, HTML history and how to code it and basic HTML document structure. Let's start with the question, what is HTML stands for hypertext markup language? We will talk about the big picture of three technologies that drive the web, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But where does HTML fit? In other words, PC has HTML play in web development. As we go along, you will see that understanding the answer to this pretty simple question will actually help you to make correct coding decision down the line. Well, first of all, so what does STEM stand for? STEM stand for? Well, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So let's go over each one of these words and find out what exactly they mean. So first of all, Hypertext. Well, Hypertext is text which contains links to other texts and that's basically the entire web right one document points to another document which points to a bunch of other document and it grows on and on and on sometimes they link back to the original document and it becomes the gigantic web obviously it's not just about next text nowadays hypermedia is plays a huge role in the web today let's see how these technologies fit in the development agenda is responsible for creating the structure you can watch video, listen to music, really hypermedia is just an extension of hypertext. The next term is markup. So, so markup means to mark something up, to annotate. So for example, it's really all about content. On the web, it's all about content. Okay. So let's talk about the three technologies that drive the web. It is one of the three core web development technologies which are HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Each one has its own distinctive purpose and all three of them fit very nicely together. Let's start with HTML. HTML provides the structure, which means that what components does the HTML document have. For example, it can have one heading, two paragraph and a footer of that page. CSS is responsible for styling and formatting legitimate elements. JavaScript is responsible for adding functionality to that human element. The main purpose of each demo was to create web pages for sharing information. That development has come a long way from loading static web pages to complex web apps like social media platform, from supporting desktop screens to supporting mobile screens to the latest version is Steam. You can watch video, listen to music, and really, hypermedia is just an extension of hypertext. So the next term is markup. So markup means to mark something up and to enter it. HTML is human readable. So this tag look like structure for a document structure. Structure, you don't need to run it through some interpreter in order to understand the output. Structure of this document is really clear what it is. The last word is hypertext markup language. Is language and language basically implies that it has its own syntax meaning that's a right and wrong way to put it. What is HTML? Hypertext markup language. Standard markup language used to create web pages. Basically tells you the browser how to display web pages. And uh, one more question. What does HTML look like? HTML uses text and element to enclose different parts of the content. What is HTML? So say I have the some definition of HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. HTML is the standard markup language for creating web pages. HTML describes the structure of a web page. HTML consists of a series of elements. HTML elements tell the browser how to display the content. HTML elements label pieces of content such as this is a heading, this is a paragraph, this is a link, etc. The doctor. So here are the some basic uh, HTML coding tag. Text are first one is the, the doctor HTML. So the doctor HTML declaration defines that this document is an HTML5 document. And next one is the HTML tag. The HTML tag element is the root element of an HTML page. Next one is the head element. So the head element contains meta information about the HTML page. Next one is the title the title the title tag. So basically I told about the title tag. The title element specifies a title for the HTML pages, which is shown in the browser title bar or in the page tag. The uh, next one is the body tag. So this is the main tag and the body tag. Main tag and the body tag. Body tag 
element defines the document body and is a, is a container for all the visible content and such as the heading, paragraphs, images, hyperlinks, tables, lists, etc. The next one is the H1 tag. The H1 element defines a large heading and the P element, the, the P tag, the P element defines a paragraph. So the, now uh, we will know about the anatomy of uh, HTML. So at the core of HTML is the HTML tag. So it's pretty important to understand what HTML tag consists of and how to properly syntactically properly code up an HTML tag. Usually HTML tag have an opening and a closing tag and there are some content. In this case, the tag P which stands for paragraph is communicating to us that the content in the gray area should be treated as a paragraph. Now technically speaking, P by itself it called an element and together with the angle brackets it's called a tag but the truth is the term is used so interchangeably that whenever somebody refers to an element p or a tag p they really could near the one and the something now most tml tags have a closing tag that matches its opening tag but not all for example the br and the hr tag br stacks for line break and hr stands for horizontal rule only have an opening tag. They don't have a closing tag at all. Now every HTML element can have predefined attributes. So we'll learn some of the most common ones as we progress in this course. But here what you need to know about tag attributes in general. Attributes is a name value pair that is a kind of metadata about the element itself that it's being applied to. So in this example we are assigning my id as the value of the id attribute each attribute has its own rules for meaning of its value so for example id attribute being assigned as an example has to be unique within the scope of the entire html document in other words no other element or no other kind in the web page is allowed to have its id attribute equal to the string my id if there's another element with the same value or for id that would mean that the web page contains invalid html which can potentially break some styles of lingo even functionality of the page now let's go over some of the basic spacing rules no space is allowed to exit between the opening bracket and the tag name and likewise space is not allowed between the opening the forward slash of the closing tag however you must have at least one space between the tag itself and any of these attributes and space is allowed everywhere else as is simply ignored so if you have extra space extra space after the p element in the opening tag or if you have extra space between the equal sign of the attribute name attribute value or you have other spaces even written characters characters all of that is completely ignored by the browser one more rule attribute can only be specified on the opening tag so you can specify an attribute of the closing tag now let's talk about the value of attributes for a main in html5 enclosing the value of the attribute is quotes in technically actually not required in all circumstances but nevertheless it's best practice to always surrender the value of the attributes in either single or double quotes it doesn't matter whether you use single or double quotes the real and equivalent in html a more interesting case arises when the value of the attribute itself contains quotes. So the actual value has quotes as a part of its value in this type of situation. The only thing you have to watch out for is making sure you close the quotes in opposite order for of them. So if the last quote was a single quote, it must be closed first. Which quotes you first you start with doesn't make any difference. You could start with double quotes as we have in the example here or you could start with single quotes. You can also nest this as many times as you want as long as you close them. Obviously in the proper order but in practice it's a kind of very rare that you have to have more than two levels of course in any more of that. And it could just become messy and hard to read. Now if you, now, if you have dealt with the previous version of HTML, especially XHTML, the, you might be familiar with the idea of a self-closing tag. A self closing tag is basically an HTML XML type of shorthand notation for a tag that happens is not contain any content. For example, 
if we have wanted to have a placeholder in our HTML document for some other in content that we will dynamically perhaps insert at some later point. That would be one example of when we need to have an HTML tag and that has no content to begin with. However, in HTML5, the tag is a little bit more semantic. So if the HTML5 tag is capable, meaning it can possibly even have some content. It is illegal for the tag to be self-closing, even if there are no content at the moment. So instead, you have to provide an opening and the closing text without any space in between them to signify and to communicate the lack of content as surrendered by this text. So in summary, we went over the anatomy of HTML text, the opening and the closing text, the fact that it can attribute, describing what the text itself is. Remember that you can use double and single course interchangeably. Just make sure if there's actual course in the value open attribute. You have to interchange them in some order that you open them. You have to all close them in the opposite order. And we also went over how to specify a tag without any content inside HTML5 for which the rules are a little bit different than for the previous version of HTML. Next, we are going to talk about how to trace the basic HTML document structure. So, uh, so basically, the this is the uh, HTML doc basic document structure. First, uh, here is uh, we talk about the document the HTML and then the HTML first uh, starting starting tag and uh, next uh, head tag, uh, title tag, page title, uh, H1 tag, P1 tag, body tag, HTML. So, so basically, this is the, uh, the HTML basic structure. Now we will talk about the history of HTML. So let's briefly talk about talk about the history of HTML. It's usually the case that the history of a new technology is not particularly interesting or exciting. And I can't claim the history of HTML is that interesting either. But there are certain parts of this history that not only you give you an understanding of how this technology was developed, but also gives you an appreciation of certain aspects of HTML that are still relevant and applicable today. In 1991, Tim Berners-Lee invented HTML. And in 1999, WTC recommendation HTML 4.01 version and 2014, WTC recommendation HTML 5. But uh, but you do, you have to remember that the latest version of HTML is HTML 5.2. Okay, that uh, that is that the whole HTML WTC thing is moving away so slowly and to, on top of that they feel that the specifications are really moving in the wrong direction. So the browser banded together. The browser vendors banded together and they created another group that produced specification that was called what wg and the what wg that's that's yet another appreciation because we don't have enough of them and they are ones that are driving the interest in like what do we have know they are driving behind it the organization actually being driven the people by the companies they actually matter actually matter so as to what what WG and W3C started sort of in kind of working together and what is probably in the end of uh, what we have now is 10 5 so it doesn't matter to you so it could you so basic uh, so you uh, will start uh, coding the basic HTML document so now we are going to create a basic HTML document structure by going straight to the editor and coding one up by ourselves and then we will validate it on the W3C web validator site okay so i am so i am in windows visual study and i have a document open a file open called structure before html so we have a blank state in front of us and we are going to create a, our very first html pages so every html page should start with the doc type or document type declaration the words doc type or html be lower or upper cases the only thing you have to watch out for is that there shouldn't be any space between less than exclamation point and the word doc type. You can have as much space as you want anywhere else but it just doesn't look that great. So we'll just keep it to one space. In the first, this declaration was pretty complicated looking. Certainly, to not too many people would be able to type them up without copy and paste. HTML5 browser, however, change all that. Now the declaration is as simple as it can be, and it does to tell the browser that it should get ready to render HTML. Now I know what some of the you might be thinking. 
what else would there be if not HTML? There doesn't seem to be any practical purpose for this declaration. If you are thinking that you are absolutely right that this declaration is really largely historical. When HTML standards were first becoming popular, the web was full of pages that were not complicated with the standards. To help browsers render those pages correctly, browsers use the doc type declaration to distinguish between non-compliant and compliant pages. Non-compliant pages were rendered in what's called quarks mode and the com compliant pages were rendered in what's called the standards mode. Now that's all historical. But what you need to know today is that if you leave off the HTML pages declaration, that will signal to the browser that it should retreat your page as one not following HTML standards. I am not going to into uh, what the would actually mean in practice, but not in need less to say things would be a bit messed up. Your layout wouldn't work quite right. The styles you apply would work a bit well, quite So to make a long stay short always, short always, the use HTML HTML5 doc type declaration. Next one is the HTML tag and that's basically a tag that contains the entire HTML document. After the HTML tag goes the head tag. The head tag contains items that describe the main content of the page. Things like what character coding should the browser use for the main content. It can contain all those description of the pages, page, title and whatever other external source resources are needed to render the page properly. Among other things, the point is if the contains some metadata about the main content. Let's write our first meta tag to specify the character and encoding of our web page. While not absolutely required is always a good idea to specify the character set that the browser should know how to interpret the content of the web page. The most commonly used character set is UTF-8. And also note that the meta tag is a stand along tag. There is no closing tag meta tag. Next, we will specify the title of the page. The title is one of the tags that is actually required to be here. Without it, the HTML will be invalid. After the head tag goes the body tag. The body tag is the root of all content that is visible to the user. It is often referred to as a viewport. We can now write our content. Okay. So let's talk about a look at the how this looks in the browser. Okay, and here our page. Let's see the content. This is the fast HTML coding. I am learning so much. And you can see the title. I fast HTML coding. Next, uh, let's try to take this code from our page and copy and paste it to validate it. Inside the WPC validator, it says we are valid. I am sure you have noticed by now that what we are doing is nesting one HTML tag into another. For so, for example, we could say that the HTML tag contains the title tag. One important rule when nesting HTML tag is that you have to close the last open tag before you close it to open tag. If you don't, the HTML you wrote is invalid. So, for example, here I have a paragraph and I don't worry about how the paragraph at the moment, but this paragraph tag P is closed before the last open tag. Span and span is closed after. So if we copy and paste the code and place it inside our to check it, you will see that it's complaining saying that the end tag be seen, but there are were open elements. In other words, it wants us to close the span tag, which was open last. Before we close the outer P paragraph tag, one more note before we move on. When the browser open an HTML page, it only renders or interprets the HTML code sequently from top to bottom. So the doc tag declaration gets interpreted first and then the HTML tag, then the head tag and one and it until it hits the last closing the HTML tag. Little important to remember, we progress further into the course. In summary, we went over the bare minimum HTML document plus widget sum. We will over the HTML version declaration and remember we will have to close it otherwise but also we will put into it. We want to the HTML rendered by the browser secondly meeting top to bottom. And it renders top to bottom as the next we are going to talk about HTML content model. So, uh, then uh, goodbye.